नमस्कार हम अशोक व्याज एंड नाउ आई एम सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ दी पार्ट दैट आई टुक फ्रॉम दी वेबसाइट ऑफ वेलनेस विथ साइला एंड आई फाउंड इट वेरी एक्साइटिंग लर्निंग अबाउट द जर्नी ऑफ साइला जी एंड स्पेशली शी हैज रूटीन और रादर शी रीड्स टू बुक्स एवरी वीक हाउ दैट हैपन आई बिकेम वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टेड इन लर्निंग दैट एंड दैट इज ऑल्सो रिलेटेड टू द नॉलेज ऑफ चक्रा एंड ऑल दैट सो Let me first of all have the pleasure of welcoming Saila ji. Saila ji, namaste. Namaste, Ashok ji. Thank you. Thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. So, uh, bo- books are uh, one of my uh, best friends, you can say. So, instead of uh, binge watching on Netflix or going out to the bar, <laughs> I enjoy reading books. I know it's a very nerdy concept. but i love books and also one more thing that is very useful today is the um, uh the ones that we can download on the phone and we have it as an app so i forget the name of the app um audible yeah so now we can have books uh really published well uh, well known books are available on audible and uh, you can listen to it even when you're cooking when you are doing some um, you know that re- does not require much attention here is a question listening to a book and reading a book what is the difference in terms of the comprehension or how much you get out of it yeah i i some of my favorite books i always like to read it because then i can you know flip through the pages i can do markings so like that the books written by swami vivekananda ji books written by swami satyananda saraswati ji those are things that are uh, very precious for me and uh, sometimes i would have listened in the audible and i'll go back and buy them just to keep them in my like in my section of books and they are very personal to me they are like gems hidden gems so i like to like you know read through and mark it or put some tags to it the important ones and that is what helps me in writing my podcasts in writing my future books as you can see i i am uh, i love writing and uh, because the only way that we can leave our mark in today's society is through our books right because nobody is going to be here permanent and if uh, if we can do something good for the future generation that is through the books right and uh, we are i am not interested in um, making um, um big huge saving or making a big 401k for myself <laughs> but this is what i feel is a contribution that everybody must uh, try and do so that the future generation can live pill free disease free and stress free okay, let me uh, learn more about your reading habit in terms of how it uh, flows in day to day life uh, when i say day to day life meaning you have limited number of hours and you have n number of things waiting for you so do you earmark specific time uh, for reading every day yeah 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 definitely so early morning when i finish my sadhana which is usually about uh, daily yoga meditation i have like six steps of sadhana that i teach my students daily yoga meditation daily walk with nature or spend time with nature daily um make a list of things to do for that day so that you're not lagging behind because otherwise we are just running one after the other and we don't accomplish what we need to do so daily do a make a list of things that you need to finish daily journal your thoughts very important that is, uh, always highlight that so when you are listening to books you want to journal what you learned in uh, journaling when i say journaling yeah, today we don't have like book and paper but what i do is i every day i shoot a email to myself so it will have like you know my my thoughts for the day what i read in the books for the for that day and what i want to learn in future what books i want to read in future all that and daily be grateful to something or someone before going to bed and daily follow the 15 rules of satvik diet and that this is a little booklet that again it's available on my website 15 rules of satvik diet so this is the daily discipline or sadhana practice that i i do and this is what i teach for my clients and students who come to me so in this also 
so this is integrated with my practice of reading and writing you know and it goes together and um, so it's we don't consider it as a task it is a sadhana so it is a spiritual practice so now you mentioned about sattvic diet what is that so sattvic diet is very important for understanding especially in the us na if people they think that there is a myth that oh no onion no garlic it is sattvic then i can eat in mcdonalds also mcdonalds also doesn't have onion and garlic <laughs> but that is not sattvic huh so very certain very simple rules that are applicable to the us population that is what i have included in the 15 rules of sattvic diet say for example simple things na for lunch when you have when you have your lunch people here along with that lunch invariably they end up drinking beer or uh, iced tea or soda or ice water whenever you drink something so cold then you are extinguishing the pitta or the digestive fire right so how is the food going to digest so everything is getting not metabolized it is getting converted to fat so this is a simple rule which is culturally very common in america of course it may not be still very common in india uh, there may be people still drink water what simple plain normal room temperature water or slightly lukewarm water is what you should have before lunch and after lunch but that is not people that is not what they do here they keep adding soda yeah. and all yeah go ahead yeah i i i heard from uh, practicing yogis that uh, right after food you should not be drinking water for at least half an hour or something uh, is that uh, it is it is important yeah that is also part of the sattvic diet why the yogis say that is um, you know uh, first of all in between meals you should not drink that again people here are doing that mistake they will be gulping soda they will be gulping ice water or juice or something that should not be done and then again uh, after immediately after eating you don't want to gulp lot of water because it is washing out all the digestive juices and the food so because each organ as the food passes from the mouth to the esophagus to the stomach to the pancreas each of these organ are producing certain amount of juices in in one day our body is capable of producing 1500 to 1800 ml of digestive juice and if we are washing it off immediately after eating then it is not acting it is not getting time to digest and break down and metabolize so that is the reason the yogis they say don't immediately drink water after the food give it some time so that you can allow the digestive juices to act on the food so that is uh, very important so the, all these simple rules you know if you follow by uh, getting to the booklet which is on my website and uh, all the things that i am focusing here in this book is for the american population yeah so this is uh, the upcoming books where you are seeing and the sattvic diet booklet is not in amazon but it is a small 30 page booklet so i wanted to make it very easy and simple for people where they can just read through you know and it's only 30 pages because some people don't want to read books and the and i the books that are published are like 90 to 100 pages and above but this is very 30 to 35 page that's all so anybody can just print it out from the website and um, you know ha- it has some pictures and figures you can read through that you can follow those 15 rules and it will be helping you to understand your body and uh, metabolism and avoid unwanted illnesses so today um, focusing on the reading habit once again and mm-hmm. connecting it with if at all there is a connection Uh, with with the balance of chakra so there are some people who can focus and consistently continue with one book and uh, finish it that take another one as you do which chakra do you think has some relationship with our uh, being a focus reader yeah focus focus comes mostly from the higher chakras if you see here na no? right. um the uh, third chakra and throat chakra throat chakra is the expression right 
so that's why journaling the thoughts is very important the more you write the more you are telling to yourself and the more you are able to express and the more you are able to focus of course meditation is very important to improve your focus we all know that in addition to that the chakras specifically related to focus expressing writing uh, and understanding the thoughts comes from throat chakra the fifth chakra and the sixth chakra that is those two chakras are very important we should start always from the lower chakra so i will say start from the fifth chakra where you are first expressing and then you go to um, focus and all that which is higher chakras so there are two sides and somehow there is so much uh, that one can learn from dr saila ji uh, from her journey as well as uh, the way she is helping um, i'll just restrict uh, our conversation today to the question that relates to uh maybe tuning your chakras or bringing that balance again is that possible for everyone how that happens and generally people say how many days it takes or how many months it takes etc people <laughs> are in rush here yes so you won't believe uh, how often i get question the same thing so it's a very logical question and like um, modern medicine it this it doesn't happen overnight everything in yoga needs sadhana and um, that is what uh, helps in unblocking the chakras first of all commitment to the practice and when i say the practice the sadhana in chakras includes not only yoga yogasanas and pranayam it also includes mudras mantras and overcoming certain emotions for example muladhar the primary emotion people have if they are blocked is fear just fear okay that is the main emotion they have if they are so the anxiety depression um social illnesses you know we seen gun shooters in america so they all have fear that somebody is out to get them you know so all the social illnesses psychological illnesses are muladhar related meaning survival related uh, uh, chakra so like this every chakra has certain emotion that we need to identify another thing i do where it is all chakra students get to do is take a simple quiz on my website so if you go there you see behind you there is something called chakra quiz so once you finished muladhar session with me i will share the muladhar questions it will have about 20 to 30 questions yes or no and based on that question i will see the answers and i will give you whether a score whether 0 to 1 is mild blockage 6 to 11 is moderate blockage 12 and above is severe blockage and then based on that blockages i will tell you exactly how much of sadhana you need to do how many um, you know minutes every day you need to practice so that's also a good guide of you know how to overcome these blockages of course like i said initially it's not going to happen overnight but if you follow the directions that i'm telling you you can comfortably understand when it is unblocked and you will feel the relief you will feel the changes and a lot of students have felt the changes and that's why they go and recommend this to their friends to the universities and you know other people and they say you know include this uh, thing in your uh, program so that is how it works so um to keep it brief if uh, you tell us your most favorite book and um, do you read a book again and again also there are some books yeah there are some books uh, in fact my favorite book of course uh, number one is bhagavad gita i always have it here it's interesting how you asked it and it is right in front of me <laughs> so the two two most favorite books that i will show here uh, so you can see it is almost like torn because i read it so many times <laughs> so this is uh, swami satyananda saraswati ji's book so it is a systematic course in the ancient tantric principles of yoga and kriya okay. so it is about 1000 pages very good book and uh, every time i read it some new knowledge will pop up in my brain and the second book that i highly recommend is of course bhagavad gita 
So this is about uh, 800 to 900 pages by Swami Prabhupada. You must have heard this. Uh, yes, writer. Yeah, so he explains it very, uh, you know, verse by verse. And um, and I interf interfer that and I infer that and I make my own little podcasts. So, you know, adding my um, ideas and uh, interpretations. So that is how I like to read books. So I don't like to just read books and, you know, close it and for the purpose of reading. I go back, I analyze it, I uh, make my little journals or I do a podcast or something like that. So that's how my, um, uh, the more you uh, practice, the more you teach, the more we learn also. So Absolutely. So if I um, use the word enlightenment, I don't know exactly what it is. But I would, uh, in my humble understanding, say people who do not block their energy and are uh, willing to flow and offer the best that they have. And probably you will have something to do with chakras also. Their granthis are opened. And yes. uh, maybe Kundalini has wo jagrat ho gai hai So I see that somewhat parallel to that in you. And I before this conversation uh, came to learn that how you were affected by the passing away of your father, you went to de into depression, you studied uh, and you work with psychiatrists also. And But I, I think in all that journey which you mentioned and probably I'll request you to briefly share some outlines of that uh, phase again. But I think what was most important was your willingness to not stay down and don't uh, consider yourself as finished. So I think that spark of life leads to a sense of enlightened living. So now mm -hmm. over to you, uh, there must be many people who reach to that uh, orbit where they feel that nothing is working out or maybe somebody uh, didn't fulfill their expectations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So over to you, Saila, on this page. Yeah, yeah. So in the, in today's uh, world, no, there are so many different kinds of yoga we hear: Yin yoga, hot, hot yoga, this yoga, that yoga. But they are all derivatives of five kinds of yoga: Karma yoga, the path of selfless action; Jnana yoga, the path of self-realization; um, Raja yoga the path of liberation through the eight limbs you know the one that uh, swami vivekananda explains then there is kundalini yoga which is the path of activation of spiritual energy and then comes the um, uh, the raja karma jnana kundalini spiritual yeah Sorry. so yeah. Ra yeah the raja yoga so those are the five different paths and everything else is a derivative of these things right yeah so when we say yoga in america everybody is thinking just stretching your hands and legs and you're done but that is just a small part of the yoga the entire tradition of yoga is so vast and huge like an ocean and when we talk about enlightenment it can uh, the last another one is bhakti yoga very important that is what uh, shri krishna talks about in the bhagavad gita so all these uh, forms of yoga are leading us to liberation, mukti, right? And uh, But the paths are different, right? Bhakti is taking us through devotion. Karma is taking us to selfless action. Jnana is taking us through self-realization. And Raja Yoga through learning the eight limbs of yoga, you know, the uh, yamas, niyamas, asana, pranayama, dhyana, dharana, pratyahara, samadhi. So ultimate is samadhi. And then kundalini yoga by activation of the spiritual energy that is dormant. So ultimately all the paths are leading to enlightenment. But it is not necessary that we will reach the enlightenment in this life. That is what is clearly said by Sri Krishna and by all the uh, yogis and uh, Maharishis. But we have to start it. We have to initiate that at some point in life. Otherwise, we will be caught up in the cycle of 
birth and death and we will be going through suffering because of what we call ignorance so it is important for people to recognize this that they have to enter the path of liberation and enter the path of enlightenment at some point either this life or next life maybe 100 lives later and all this is carried over as part of karmic memory and genetic memory that's why we see a lot of young yogis suddenly they get enlightened how how it happens like uh, sadguru ji he said in his early 20s he got enlightened he did not have a guru he did not go to yoga school so when we when we talk about these enlightenments it is called awakening also it is said awakening so these things happen spontaneously because they have done lot of sadhana in one of their previous lives which yeah, comes into fruition so one of you who is enlightened if he or she is listening maybe it may happen in this, this life also based yes. on what yes. has happened already in your previous life so yes. but but let me bring it back to um, the reference that i wanted you to sort of open up when you feel depressed or down um some people take to drugs also some people yes. take uh, uh, those uh, uh, alcohol stuff. smoking yeah. yeah all those uh, those are only temporary forms of relieving right i mean uh, smoking is like you know you get nicotine you go you get a high when the cigarette is over then again that levels come down again you crave for it so it is a it's a business it's a it's a business thing that they are selling these things and unfortunately despite knowing these cycles of addiction it is still sold very widely in the world right and we also know it is not only addictive it is also causing cancer so some of the even um, alcohol also you know to causing um, um esophageal cancer it can cause stomach cancer it can cause liver cancer um but still people you know advertise drinking and uh, now they have made social drinking such a common right. thing that everybody thinks it is okay and uh, the problem is they don't know when to stop one drink leads to another then another then they become once a week becomes twice a week then every day weekly so that is how the addictions build right and mm-hmm. these are all marketed by huge franchises and uh, one person or two person cannot fight with these franchises so again addiction per se if you see it is coming from muladhar blockage so muladhar means again your survival instincts are shaken feeling disconnected from the world right that is the muladhar the root chakra so these these people who are feeling disconnected they get addicted very easily to these things whether it's alcohol addiction sugar addiction you must have heard that people uh, getting a, addicted to sugar hmm. let let me get to your personal side with your permission and that is when you found yourself in such challenging circumstances and uh, you bravely uh, did consultancy with a psychiatrist and yeah. at the same time you were also studying deeply and trying to understand what it is all about and uh, of course you must bhagavad gita sanan saraswati ji and other swami vivekananda sages so what was your conclusion uh, was there a eureka moment or it was like a bit by bit some unfolding of a uh, larger understanding bigger understanding yeah so yes there is a, there is a little bit of um, i would say a little bit of karmic memory also uh, hidden here maybe i have done some sadhana in the past why i say that is i did not go learn yoga in school i was i was studying in a christian convent school i went to christ college and i did not i was not exposed i wish i was that is one of my goal to have yoga being exposed right from childhood for all the kids then we will not see depression we will not see obesity we will not see pcod but unfortunately we are not doing that what we are teaching in schools and colleges is how to make a career but how to lead a life how to live in peace we are not taught 
that is how i was also right i wanted to become the doctor i wanted to travel to america i wanted to accomplish many things and um, then when you have this sudden uh, fall down fall down in your life and you're you know depressed and i was diagnosed with uh, bipolar not an ordinary depression so there are periods of mania and periods of feeling very low so i uh, i realized that myself and then uh, you know i when i see i sought help uh, it was very difficult because uh, i had to be managed with multiple medicines and uh, one of the things that uh, i have sh- i'm going to share in my memoir if thoughts can cure it's the book's name is if thoughts can cure which is going to come up i don't know when is that i had a very deep relationship with my father and for a period of one year after he died he was communicating with me and the one thing that he kept telling is that i need to go see a doctor which i did not realize until then that i was in depression and i was going through all this so of course there are some eureka moments like this and when he kept telling me that what i did is as a doctor i went and took a online screening test for uh, bipolar and the score came very high and it said please go see your psychiatrist as soon as possible and then it struck oh my god this is what my father was trying to tell me so there are so there is a lot of connection between um, me my father's soul trying to come back and uh, you know push me in the right direction and that you can consider that as a eureka moment because not everybody is able to communicate with their person after they died but somehow for a period of year i was able to communicate and uh, he was giving me directions uh, and it was only for a year so some people can say oh you know bipolars are hallucinating but it did not happen after the year after that one year uh, the titi and everything um, you know i the communication stopped and by then i had uh, gotten a good idea about my body and mind i had gotten understood a lot about chakras and then the path uh, so in other words he kind of set put me on a path so you can say that that was like a eureka moment and everybody has such moments in life you know where um, something extraordinary power comes and uh, puts you or directs you towards something so in this case you can say my father was uh, that uh, ignition he ignited that thing and said something is wrong first you need to go take care of your health so that was something that was a big eye opening incident for me <laughs> earlier you were mentioning uh, about uh, lack of exposure so we will talk about that and now there is hindu university of america as viewers can see on the screen we will talk about your uh, being a faculty of this university also sure. but I, but with your permission i want to stay at the space where you are right now and if possible uh, the the session with psychiatrists yes. and what you are now offering in the form of uh, teaching or a way of healing through yes. chakra yoga and uh, uh, meditation etc how would you compare these two both complement or uh, they have different way of approaching a patient yeah very very good question actually so that's why i i wrote this book 21 steps to reprogram the mind so in this book if you see it will have yoga psychology plus modern psychology combined so there are some things that i would have picked from my uh, modern medicine for example what are the four a's to deal with depression um you know acceptance assess options awareness and then action so these are the four methods that is very commonly used in psychology and psychiatry right so those things i would have picked up from my um, uh, psychiatrist uh, psychology and modern medicine and then how do you bring awareness when we talk about awareness it is beautifully described in yoga it is called swadhyaya swa means self adhyaya means reading your own self or understanding your own self so that is awareness so it's a deeper connection by so you have to 
study your own self only then you will find a solution to your depression if i keep taking the pills and you know suffering along with that it is not going to go anywhere so always awareness swadhyaya is very important part of connecting that connecting the dots with modern psychology and yogic psychology and awareness is like understanding your likes and dislikes understanding your strengths and weakness understanding your past failures and how to move on all this comes from bringing awareness swadhyaya into your life so it has to be a integration of both definitely wonderful so i appreciate that uh, and as i was mentioning about hindu university uh, and i want to thank uh, those who love uh, what they learn and then they want to share so through the reference of hindu university i uh, got to meet you and we are uh, on the path of enlightened living uh, in that context uh, here are some images that uh, relates yes. to um, hindu university and i think this was one of the retreat where you were also present no i missed this retreat this was okay. from the previous quarter okay, okay. another upcoming retreat i'm going to be leading the chakra program there so i'm very excited to be that's going to be in june 27 28 29 30 so participants please um, you know bring your friend your spouse and encourage them to be in this uh, retreat it will be and thank you ashok ji yeah for giving me this yeah thank uh, just stay with me for a second i'll yeah get this uh, 30 second uh, info on hua and want to mention those who want to learn more about hindu university of america the easiest way nowadays is to go to their website hua.edu but here are uh, some highlights spirituality cosmology and philosophy discover the treasure of ancient vedic wisdom at hindu university of america an online university with global access and outstanding faculty which has been setting standards of excellence across seven areas of hindu dharma study through 12 plus programs and 120 courses shape the future of sanatan dharma in the world join hindu university of america So that was about Hindu University of America, and uh, I will also bring this slide, which uh, gives an idea about the graduate division courses that are being offered, and these are the community education division. But uh, with this, I also uh, feel um, I hope you will agree with me because you are a lover of books, Ayla ji. What fills us with a sense of joy is knowledge. Uh, so learning and loving, I think, are the two important uh, wings with which we can soar high and uh, have a taste of <laughs> fulfillment so to say satsang is uh, given so much importance in our tradition because uh, the word exposure or whatever you say we imbibe so much uh, and and as i conclude um, you have uh, Have you have you also been uh, in the presence of someone whose presence itself was kind of uplifting, like you know, a conversation mentioned of Sadguru or maybe any other saint or any uh, person, indeed your father was a great yeah. influence. But overall, spiritually, yeah, speaking. yeah, yeah, I do have in-person gurus also. Uh, my Vedantic guru Jay Shankar Ji, he is running. Um, i attend his online programs and he i have visited him he has visited my home so he's in running um, gurukul in uh, southern part of tamil nadu in a small village so his presence is, has a great influence on my uh, thought process whenever i face um, you know any dilemmas i always uh, consult him and uh, then there is also guru siddhat banerji he is also uh, one of my in person gurus so there are a lot of gurus like this whose presence and whose advice i sincerely follow i always um, have them on my mobile whenever <laughs> well, so it's it's always um, uh, you know quick nowadays with texting and everything and you know and they always suggest some kriyas or they will suggest some programs to join or some books to read so it's always good to have um, 
uh, focused guru, you know, and it helps in your sadhana, it helps in um, avoiding confusion. So I myself conduct meditation sessions here. And you mentioned satsang. Satsang is also a type of yagna. So I wrote a small blog for uh, Hindu University of America on yagna. I'm, I'm big, I love writing. So yagna is not just about sitting around the fire. Satsang is yagna. And yagna, the actual meaning is bringing things together. So satsang is a yagna. When you're doing a puja, a ritual, you're bringing the elements together, right? By uh, doing arati, the fire element, you're doing uh, tita, the water element, you're um, uh, igniting the kumkum, you're putting kumkum, that's igniting the uh, agna, the space element. Then you're ringing the bell, that is the vibration element. Uh, so every element that you bring together is a yagna. In satsang also, you're bringing people together. When you're bringing people together, their voices come together, their thoughts come together, and their devotions come together. So it is a yagna. And um, the I always say even planet Earth is in yagna. You know, it's a, such a beautiful concept. Uh, Mother Earth is always in bringing people together, right? And if she decides to uh, disappear, then we all are gone. So she brings the um, water, she keeps the, uh, the air element, the food element and everything. She provides all of us everything and there is so much out there. And uh, so planet Earth is in yagna. Our body is a yagna, keeping things together, right? So everything when it is in yagna, um, when it is co cohabiting with each other and living in harmony with each other, then that becomes a beautiful life. And that is what is the concept that we learn in uh, Yagna. So satsang is a type of Yagna. So thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Sailaji, there are so many uh, rays uh, or rather branches of knowledge and each one has its own interest. And I appreciate you generously sharing uh, the wealth of knowledge. And we hope to continue with uh, these uh, kind of uh, sessions where yes. uh, our level of consciousness is uplifted and the, yeah. the satsang uh, definitely is uh, very, very important. So yes, thank you. My... thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for Hindu University of America. Thank you for Ashokji for, um, you know, highlighting the importance and uh, giving us an opportunity to talk about our passion so people get enlightened and uh, also take use of these programs. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'll also mention the name of this uh, YouTube channel, Haramba, comes from the inspiration of Lord Ganesh Ji. So I was reading mm -hmm. once Kalyan's uh, special ankh on Ganapati, then I thought, uh, so this came and and then I, I was keeping it aside, but it was coming again and again. So that, then that's how it started. So basically, Definitely. And uh, Ganapati is my Ishta Devta. So I, I, have a I have a tattoo of Ganesh Ji on my body. He is my Ishta okay. Devta. So definitely there is a connection. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we'll conclude with two mantras. One is Vakra Tund Mahakaya, Surya Koti Samaprabha, mm -hmm. Nirvignam Kuru Me Deva, Sarva Karya Shu Sarvada. Sarvada. So this is typically the first uh, with which we should have started. We but, should have started, yeah. yeah. But uh, Ganesh Ji will forgive us. And now we conclude with Poonamada. Om Poonamada. Poonamada, Poonamidam, Poonat, Poonamudachyate, Poonasyapoonamadaya, Poonameva, Om Shanti Shanti. Om Shanti Shanti. Thank you. <laughs>